It's a lake that covers both the Swedish and the Norwegian border. And every winter there would be ice fishers from both countries trying their best luck. But every year the Norwegians would have a great catch, while the Swedes caught nothing. Nothing! The Swedes grew a bit tired of this and decided they would send a spy over to see if there was some trick the Norwegians used that they didn't know about. The Swede went over to the Norwegians and snooped around a bit, and then came back to his side. They all gathered around him with great anticipation, and he whispered, They drill holes in the ice! Good morning, I'm just about on the border of Sweden and Norway at the moment. I'm in the south starting point, it's like a five kilometers that way. And I got myself this kind of a lavo as we call them in Finnish, I don't know what's the English variant for that word, but Norway, Sweden and Finland, at least those countries have a lot of these all over the, all over the country. So. Basically, if you want to make a fire or if you want to sleep like this in the tent, you can do and they are completely free. But yeah, let's try to ride the full Trans Euro Trail Norway. The goal is to ride the southern part, which is like 90% of the tent anyway here. So we'll see probably some pretty awesome views and uh, I hope I can capture them as best as I can with all the camera gear that I have with me. Let me show you the campsite a little bit. So here's where I slept over the night. You don't even need the rain cover. I just put it there so that sun wouldn't shine me in the eye in the morning. But all my crap is there. It's a single tent, so it's very small, but it's doable. And then there's the Torek and this beautiful view. Isn't she pretty? And so is the Torek actually. Now that I get to travel with the bike, I'm actually starting to slowly fall in love with this Torek. It's been a bit of a rocky start with the fork problems. and uh, But yeah, I don't travel. I don't like big heavy bikes at that point. But the moment I start traveling, these bikes make sense. Let's get to the trails. <laughs> Don't want to forget that. <laughs> I have my rain pants in this side back here. Very easy access and fast. All right, let's get to the Tet Norway. It's only two kilometers from this spot, so very close. Alright, we're finally here. It's been a dream of mine for a long time to ride the Trans Euro Trail Norway. Now I'm finally in Norway and I'm expecting this track to be nice and scenic. The Trans Euro Trail tracks are usually not very, very difficult here in the northern part of Europe, but I'm expecting a lot of mountainous views and beautiful breathtaking scenery but it's nice to see that the trans euro trail actually starts immediately with gravel so it's not like a long distance cruise with on asphalt tracks first but yeah this nice foresty looking place it looks a lot like finland at this point time because this is not a very mountainous area this beginning of this track but we will probably get a lot better views up ahead. So let's see what Norway has to offer and I hope you enjoy the trip with me.
Woohoo! It's kind of interesting this track. It's wet and uh, the water is running down it, so there's ruts and it's not completely boring. I'm surprised. It's a fantastic feeling to ride the TED in an, a foreign country once again. New adventure. You take a deep breath, just let it all out. Let all the stress out, all the worry out. Just let it soak into these trails. What a fantastic feeling. I had to stop and see this little sheep on the road, just chilling there. I'm scared that they're gonna, the truck is gonna <laughs> go over. Come on, little sheep, please. truck might run them over if they just chill on the road. So I hope they can just... Maybe you should move. Come on, dude. Dudes and doodliness. Move away on the road. Yeah. There you go. There you go. You're cute, but not very smart, aren't you? Be careful. <laughs> can I say hi? No, they're just chilling. All right, well, I did what I can. Let's continue that way. We don't really get sheep like that roaming around on the, on the road in Finland. But they seem like they're pretty much the same like uh, our reindeer is. They're pretty stupid and they just roam around the road and they just sit on the road and they don't they don't care at all that there's traffic and uh, have low no concept of a moving car <laughs> i do understand why the speed limit here is so low those things can be anywhere so you have to be a little bit on the watch constantly oh there's even cows on the road without any restrictions so you can have a <laughs> big problem if you don't see one of those. I'm a sheep farmer. <laughs> Just sitting there. No care in the world. Get off the road, dude. <laughs> I think it's worth a visit. Looks beautiful, so let's go here. At least try to go here in these rocks <laughs> a bit of enduro with the Torek oh <laughs> wow would you look at that let's take a break here looks nice just need to find a rock or something uh, under there oh yeah that's better Love the sound of those bells and the colors of the sheep. Just clinging and clanging. So clear from all the way from there. By Norwegian standards, this is nothing but a small hill. This is already so beautiful had to stop here and just take it in for a moment you should never be so in a hurry that you don't have the time to stop and just enjoy it At 
let's try to move forward to the next destination, Lillehammer. Wow, oh, that's a lot of cows. <laughs> oh, he's, the little one was eating. <laughs> nice view now. Maybe a, a little bit well-known fact of Lillehammer is that it was the Winter Olympics uh, host city of I think 94 or something like that. I was a teeny tiny boy back then. So I don't really remember it from that, but I remember Lillehammer from the series called, called Lillehammer. It was a comedy series, I think it was Netflix. It wasn't a long run, that series, maybe a few seasons. Uh, it's kind of funny, you should check it out if you have a Netflix subscription, Lillehammer. It's a fun series. Uh, easy watch. Descending to this city is absolutely beautiful. Wow, just spectacular view. Beautiful town. I love this small kind of look at that building. Beautiful. That's a living wall, I think. Really cute town, I must say. <laughs> but the fuel is extremely pricey here. That's like two and a half euros a liter for 95 octane fuel. That's. Uh, <laughs> I'm not sure if that's the conversion rate, but I think it's something like 10. All right, we are here. There's my little cabin. And there's the mountains of Lillehammer. Let's go check out our crib for the night. It's a third night, I think, <laughs> if you count from Finland. Here's the Torek, he can sleep outside. And here's my little cabin. No electricity, heating is by wood, if I want to do that. There's some wood right there. Outdoor toilet, very basic. But it's pretty cute inside actually. Let's go and check it out. Weird door. <laughs> Excellent start. This is it. Here's where I ate all the food in the world because I was extremely hungry when I got here. There's the wood burning oven. I should probably burn a little bit of wood for the night. I don't know how much that will reserve the heat, maybe a little. There's the pillows and uh, all that stuff you need. I'm probably gonna sleep upstairs because the host said that those are the most comfortable mattresses here. So that couch is another option, but uh, <laughs> it looks a little bit suspicious. So yeah, oil lights that are of course off the limits during the nighttime when you sleep. But yeah, there's everything I basically need. If you would think that I would save a lot of money by doing this here in Lillehammer, but this was actually 40. Uh, no, 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 40. It was 70 euros. <laughs> so even this kind of Airbnb is not cheap here in Norway. But uh, yeah, I'll be staying here for the night. Hopefully I can get more than one hour of sleep then one one or two that I got last last night, but uh, hopefully tomorrow I have a lot more energy and maybe even better videos. Who knows? But I will crash now because I'm so tired. See you in the morning. Bye. All right. Goodbye, Lillehammer. It took a little while for me today to start going because I had to go and upgrade my backpack. I bought a bigger camelback that has the drink pouch three liters and then it fits my drone stuff now so 
it's gonna make it so much easier to fly that thing but of course it's gonna break if I fall down on my back so <laughs> it's always a compromise somewhere but Lillehammer looks to be very cute and nice little town didn't really explore a lot of it and I got a good night's sleep in that little cabin last night so I'm kind of happy that uh, I'm all fresh feeling at the moment I feel like I could, I could drive all around the world right now invincible <laughs> But yeah, let's return to the tent. Actually, we are returning to the tent right now because this is a part of the tent. It goes through the Lillehammer Center. And uh, yeah, just let's get out of the city and see some better tracks. Shifter action. little gravel roads after the twisty parts from Lillehammer the views are way better than they were yesterday in these mountain passes now that there's some differences in height you go up and down you have hills and makes it so much more fun and enjoyable to ride But you still have to be very careful about those sheep. There are everywhere. In many corners, they're just sitting on the road, so you can't really go too hot here. And you can see there's a lot of tourists here. Fishing and looking at the views. And you do have to pass some cars here and there, but that's fine. Look, these lake views are absolutely gorgeous just beautiful <laughs> mm -hmm. you are what we used to write but now we write this kind of stuff you know <laughs> What a nice view that is. I just can't get over how beautiful it is to have mountains. <laughs> oh, I would be so happy to live here. But do you get bored of them if you just live here all the time? Well, let's see if this opens. Do we have to... Oh yeah, nice. Wow, look at that. 
think about living in that building here. <laughs> it's just looking at that view every morning when you wake up. Stunning. Absolutely stunning. Definitely one of the most beautiful sun rays I have ever seen. Now we're getting to the mountainous areas of Norway. And the views are definitely 10 times better than they were yesterday. Hello. I come as a friend. Luckily there's no bulls now. Oh, aren't you cute? So beautiful. I'm a friend. Don't worry. Oh, yo, yo, yo. Don't be scared. This is the moment when I always like that I have a quiet exhaust. Looks like a monsoon up front. My place is, I have these Norway huts here. Show on map. When I go back, I see where is the closest hut. I can see there's a gas station there. I'm gonna try to get there before this starts and then decide there what I'm gonna do. I already got soaked in Finland so I don't really <laughs> look forward to putting on my raincoat in the last few meters of my day. I should already stop riding because I've been riding for nine hours now. Of course there's some breaks in, the, in between but I've been on the road for nine hours. So that is plenty for one day, but when you're having fun, you, f you don't want to go home. <laughs> it's like when you were a kid. Come on inside, your mother called you. This is the same thing. I feel like a kid. I don't want to go home. I don't want to go inside. This is too much fun. The older you get, the less and less you feel like a kid anymore. The responsibilities of life and Everything is so serious when you're an adult. But you have to find a hobby where you find that inner child. And this is definitely that hobby for me. This brings a smile to my face and I giggle in my helmet as you have seen in my many videos. I never do that on normal occasions, but riding a bike I feel like a completely different person. I feel like I'm 20 years younger. Yes, some rain cover. I've definitely had better meals, but I don't know if I've had better backgrounds. That's a nice Trima tractor. <laughs> Bought a sandwich. Doesn't look very good, but it is what it is. You have to eat something. I don't carry much food in my backpack. I usually just eat something before I go and make my tent. Pretty dry, to say the least. It has no taste. I definitely have had some better meals on this trip. Now I eat, mm. you don't want to watch this shit. I'll come back to this if I find something. I ended up coming into a camping area because it was two kilometers of the TED tracks and I put up my tent right there behind you I can show you that's where it is so tenting for the night and tomorrow continue north and we'll see what happens it's been a fun journey so far and the tracks are only getting better
right, day number something something, I don't remember. <laughs> but the Trans Euro Trail tracks continue. The view behind is absolutely gorgeous. But we're climbing right now, so in front you don't see anything super interesting. It's quite a wind, windy day, but luckily that doesn't really bother me much when I'm riding. But when I was sleeping in the tent, <laughs> it felt like it's gonna take off constantly, so I kept waking up due to the wind. But yeah, it was still a good night's sleep. I was pretty tired after that long day of riding, so even the tent was quite nice last night. It's really cold compared to the previous days actually, but I don't mind that. It's 14 degrees in here in the mountains, but at least I'm not sweating. But wow, from the other camera you can probably see what's behind me better, but that's a beautiful scenery there. But let's try to climb this mountain and maybe there's something interesting right at the top or after we go across the crest of this little hill here. We are currently at 1.3 kilometers, so pretty high from the sea level. And that kind of explains the heat issue. Uh, it's now 13 degrees Celsius and I do have my heated grips running. But all of my ventilation is open, so I probably need to start closing them up soon. But look, there's even snow on the mountaintops there. Tells you something about the temperature here. The wind is definitely very cold. Absolutely phenomenal view. I can't help but smile coming off this mountain here. Absolutely beautiful. <laughs> Ain't that a beauty? I have to stop and close some of my vents because I'm gonna freeze otherwise. But that's a beautiful view. Just so you know, it's very expensive to ride the Norwegian Tet. There are these road tolls everywhere, very, very frequently. Like this road here, it's gonna cost me six euros. 60 knock, I think it's like six euros. And it's a short stint, and then there's the next one, and the next one, and the next one. That provider that you saw just now is very common here, but it's not the only one. Some of the payment methods are straight by card, tapping on the machine. There's even cash places. So Norway TET is definitely pay to play. And I don't know this myself yet because I'm early stages on the TET, but uh, apparently doing the full southern part of the TET is gonna cost you about 200 euros. So that's not like it's a, <laughs> that's not a small amount of money. In Finland, we don't have any toll roads. Any public or private road in Finland is completely free to ride. We do pay taxes yearly, but if you're a tourist and you come to Finland, you don't have to worry about toll roads anywhere. So that's a nice, uh, for a tourist that's nice. This is, a, <laughs> this is gonna be a s very slow bridge to go across. But yeah, that's it about the toll roads. Just so you know, if you come here, you kind of have to expect to be paying quite a lot of money to get through these TED tracks, but uh, <laughs> that's quite a hassle to get those goats across the road. How cute! <laughs> Those wooden houses. 
like from a cartoon or something really beautiful yeah the scenery definitely is like straight from a fairy tale here Lucky to find a bakery here, a very small town. I'm so hungry. It's been a long day. Thank you. Wow. <laughs> Can you see it? These views, they never get old. Taking a well-deserved break here. I'm starting to feel the trip in my shoulders especially and upper back because of the backpack. I hate riding with the backpack, but uh, it is what it is. I have to carry the drone, so there's not really anything I can do about that. I have some friends here, if you want to see. <laughs> Hello. They're very interested in me or the bike. It's probably the Torek. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> Even more coming. Clinging and clanging away. I'm today's activity, clown for the cows. <laughs> Can you say moo? No, they're not gonna talk to me, apparently. Just staring at me, like I'm the weirdo. I kinda am though. Pretty nice road, this last stretch to my campsite. this uh, road cost the 10 euros to get here but uh, this is definitely one of the more fun roads to ride here now for the whole day no other traffic or none to speak of a couple of cars here and there and uh, very good condition on this road it's just massive the view here breathtaking definitely super cold here it's plus nine degrees at the moment and even I'm a little bit struggling with the summer clothes that I have on and summer gloves and everything uh, I really don't have the warmest of uh, gear with me but I'm still fine I'm still okay
let's have this going good enough so we can start putting up the tent that's too big that's what she said so here's the place I found let me show you quite tricky to find a flat spot for the tent but I think I'm gonna just put it there Torek is there gonna sleep happily in its spot and I have a lakeside view I can't ask for anything else absolutely beautiful So this has been a nice trip so far and I'm not very good at making travel videos as you probably have seen if you have watched my latest travel videos they're pretty crappy but I, I tried a little bit more this time and maybe I can do some magic in the edit the trip is probably halfway through so far I've been lov loving it and the weather has been kind of perfect actually. Today was even a little bit too cold for my taste, but it was still fine. Plus nine, ugh, bucks everywhere. Nights have been cold. In the tent, when it drops to plus six, plus seven at night, especially last night when it was super windy. Maybe this night looks to be much more calm, so the heat might not be such a big issue. But yeah, I'm just gonna relax here, have some dry meat and uh, try to get some sleep. See you tomorrow. Like a dream. Yeah, I'm starting to leave the campsite. Clean as it's supposed to be. Don't see any trash anywhere. I thought Actually, let me talk to you like this, like a person to a person. <laughs> the nights are getting sometimes here so cold that I'm struggling a little bit with my camp gear. Yesterday, uh, well, yesterday, last night was plus four degrees Celsius. That's almost a freezing point. And my sleeping bag is definitely not, not up to it. Well, I, I still slept okay, but my feet were freezing the whole whole night. I'm interested in why is the Trollstigen, I tend to say Trollsgatan, it's Trollstigen, Trollstigen. Why is it closed this summer? And I would have liked to drive it because it's very famous for being beautiful, but I still want to see it. And maybe I can show you why it is actually closed with the drone, if I can't get that myself. So let's drive to Trollstigen and see why is it closed and how bad is it is the landslide apparently that has closed the road. So let's go there and see what's up. Thank you for the night. Beautiful spot.
let's see if this is a total waste of time or can we actually see something wow nice troll <laughs> on a motorcycle <laughs> that's cool a troll village yeah now i see the rock block shit so i guess this is as far as we can get Trollstigen is closed to vehicles, cyclists and pedestrians in 24 due to the risk of landslides. You can reach the viewpoint at Trollstigen from the other side via Valdal. It's approximately two and a half hour drive from here. <laughs> That's what I was afraid of, that I have to go below, so on top of Trollstigen. So that's where I can actually see a little better. But from here, this side, we can't see anything. At least not much. There is a road going there, I guess. But I'm gonna take the drone out and I'm gonna try to see if I can see anything from below here. That was a bit of a bummer, but I got some pretty good shots on the drone, so I hope you like it. What? What? Yeah, Suomi. Ruotsi. Ah. Yeah. How does your trust again? No, it's closed up there. No, you can go up. No, can't. How far? How? Um, a few hundred meters. Two hundred. Yeah, 200 probably. So that, then you have to yeah, a couple of corners and there's a roadblock there. Can you see anything in there? Not really, no. But you can't see much there. Ready to race. <laughs> yeah. Oh, you have a... Uh, padding, yeah, padding yeah. here and here and here and oh, yeah. back and everywhere, so... Good. Yeah. Yeah, good to see you. <laughs> yeah. Stay safe. <laughs> yeah, bye. Well, that was a weird encounter. <laughs> it's kind of funny that uh, when people ask that you're in, from Finland, they start speaking Swedish to you or Norwegian. <laughs> but sadly, I don't speak either. I can say Jahete Patset, but that's pretty much it. And a few swear words I know in Swedish, but uh, I can't really use those in conversation that much. <laughs> Back on the Tet again. Awesome vistas, very vast and beautiful as usual. The biggest mountain tops are behind us, and of course, as usual, there are some sheep. <laughs> Come on, get it, get get. Oh, a couple of fellow motorists ahead. That's kind of nice. Cute little cabins all over the place. Again with the grass roofs. What is that about? Can you tell me, Norwegians? Is it just the style, the grass roof that people like? Or is there something more to it? Looks like it's a, another fast paced gravel road. As far as the eye can see. These are so nice to ride because you can see everything so well, so far away, so 
you don't have to worry about animals or other traffic or anything just enjoy the view and enjoy the magic carpet ride that this awesome adventure bikes give you just there's no better feeling <laughs> oh yes this is so wonderful wow nice valley on the bottom there <laughs> wow beautiful beautiful welcome to Foldal people welcome to my second cabin of the trip number three at least this has electricity and it should have a shower as well so a welcome upgrade from the last one let's see keys in the door I guess this is probably where I'm gonna be sleeping Wow And there's a shower. Oh, this is cool Kitchen stuff fridge oh, way better than I thought I think this was uh, 60 or 70 euros. I I'm not sure Ah, oh, plenty for me. All right. Welcome to the new day. climbs first thing in the morning wakes you up really nice better than coffee today especially this morning I felt really tired so I am pushing it on the rest day I haven't really had one so far so yesterday was supposed to be a rest day but I ended up doing 100 kilometers of the Tet and the detour was over 200 kilometers, I think. So I ended up doing quite a lot of, lot of riding anyway. So I can definitely start to feel it in my legs and joints that I've been standing on the pegs for quite a few days. <laughs> Dudes, you are close. <laughs> If you enjoyed the trip so far, please press that subscribe button and uh, give me a like, a thumbs up for the video. It's a huge amount of work to do this, so it's really appreciated. That is a whole lot of Harley Davidson in one place. Apparently this is some kind of a kids attraction more than anything uh, apparently these are some i don't know it's like moomit in finland there's some kind of a cartoon that this is supposed to represent i don't know the cartoon or anything so i'm not gonna climb it but uh, here you go that's how it looks but i did see something really interesting back here <laughs> let's check it out it was a crazy looking contraption so i kind of have to show you it Look at that, that's a BMW, that's insane, <laughs> what is that, that's like a tricycle, but all this, look at this front wheel system here, huge brake caliber, and a crazy looking system, with the suspension and the linkage here, <laughs> it looks insane, that has to be the fastest looking three-wheeler I've ever seen. It has Oz racing wheels and everything. Wonder how it feels to ride this one. Look at the rear linkage there as well. The suspension is mounted to the side basically. 
what are the stickers here? Team. I'm not even gonna try to pronounce that. You can probably find some info online about this. I wonder if it's really made for racing or is it just a look to look cool? So, one of those detours in the Trans Euro Trail and it says Tron Fjellwegen 1666 meters above sea level. So we have to climb uh, more than a kilometer up. Should be interesting. Let's go check it out. Uphill and the Touareg is still pulling the front wheel loose. It's an animal. <laughs> Woo! Absolute beast this is. Yep, 150 nook. That's something like 13 euros probably. Just to get up there. All right. So there you can see the top. It goes all the way like that zigzag across and to the top. We already climbed a lot. It's 1.34 kilometers now from sea level. As you can see, we're pretty high up here. But the last 300 meters is that one you see there. Oh, I'm getting cold. Woo! I have to close these lap, flaps from my hands because it's freezing. Oh, crap. Do I have... No, I don't. It's just jumping because the back wheel has no traction. This is so steep. I have to keep up a good pace to get up here. Oh, my ears are locking. <laughs> We're climbing so fast. Wow. <laughs> oh, beautiful view down below. Even a bit scary. All right, let's try to do this tight camper without stalling here. You definitely have to turn off the traction control to get up here with these tires. Especially when it gets rocky with these STRs are just jumping all over the place. Come on, get up there, girl. Yes, you can do it. This is a steep one. Come on. Yes. <laughs> don't stop, don't stop. A little drift out. Oh, yeah. Oh, my front is slipping. Still a little bit of a climb here. Yes, but the Torek is, is strong. Really nice. All right, check it out. Wow. <laughs> the view changes fast. best mushroom and curries that I've ever eaten. Could be that I'm hungry as well, but really good. I'm really hot. Mm. Well, hello there. 
Can I pass? Are you kind? Please let me pass. Thank you. Thank you. Oh, aren't you cute? Little one, don't run away from your mama. All right. What do you think? Should I book my first hotel? I don't know. It's a spa. Too fancy for me. If I can see some janky ass hostel here, I, that's more my taste. Found this cute little place. Some uh, like vintage vibe hotel hostel. Very old magazines from 80s and 90s. So, all my stuff is in here, and now I'm gonna get to the town or city to find a bar or something to eat or drink or whatever, just to have a break. Today's riding was pretty boring. Only forest roads, not much to see basically. So I'm sorry if uh, there wasn't that much riding videos today. And I took a bit of a shorter day, I guess. I didn't ride as much as usual. So that's affecting things as well. But I'm here in this kind of small little town or city, just chilling. I thought I would uh, try to find a bar where I could have a good IPA and maybe a burger or something for, for some food. Cute place. Welcome to a chilly morning start here in Roros to what is most likely the last day of Trans Euro Trail trip Norway. Of course, I have a long way to do to go back to Finland after this, and uh, I might figure out some longer route using Swedish debt. But this is the last day of the film. Let's see what we can find. It's plus nine degrees, so it's. <laughs> <laughs> so cold, oh, but uh, hopefully it gets a little warmer during the day. Awesome little forest roads to start the morning. Now I'm getting warmer, standing up on the pegs and doing some work. Oh, I missed the corner. <laughs> missed my junction there. Fun tracks. Get some good scenery again. Wow. It's nice to just chill and enjoy the view. I would love to ride on top of one of those mountains. For some reason the TED doesn't really do that much. A couple times, but usually you ride here in the valley. Which is still fine, it's a beautiful view, but I would still like to climb some mountains a little bit. It would be exciting. Uh, I guess I need to open the gate. Oh, how do you do this? Oh, yeah, this way. Oh, I just have to lift the gate a little. There we go. Alrighty, 
In Finland we have a lot of these for reindeer. So if you ever ride in northern Finland, you just open and close the gate. It doesn't mean that you can't ride it. You just have to remember to close it behind you. You start to notice that it is actually the last day. And a bit of sadness comes to comes to mind. It's been a wonderful day again. Really empties your mind riding these twisties here. I have to say that I wasn't in love with the Torx 660 before I left for this trip. I was kind of on the fence about it. Like, do I actually need that kind of bike? I like the Honda and I like to day, day trips with that bike. And I felt like, always felt like this is a little big to do the things that I want to do. But now that I've been traveling with this bike, wow, what a machine. It's incredible how good this feels here. It will do anything you ask it to. Like, and the suspension is so good, so good for a stock suspension. It just takes in everything. It feels a teeny tiny bit stiff if you ride very slowly but when you get it going it, it just becomes alive it's so wonderful even with the luggage this feels like I feels like I don't even have it with me honestly I might do a stiffer springs at some point so I don't have to crank the preload so high but that should only improve this what it, what is already a very good suspension setup I definitely enjoy riding this here and I have fallen in love with this bike during this trip. It's crazy how a shorter rider like me, well I guess I'm a mid-sized rider like this bike, <laughs> uh, can take this bike and load it up with luggage and still feel ex like, like at home. I don't feel that I have a hard time pushing this around or doing technical terrain or anything. This feels so wonderfully balanced. And then when you get it going, it just keeps delivering. It's an incredible machine. Aprilia really did a good job with this machine. Reliability, I can't really talk much about that yet, but I'm closing in on my first 10,000 kilometers on this bike. And after that, I'm gonna do some kind of a mini review. Absolutely fantastic machine. Not a bad spot to take a pee break. Listen to the quiet. Can't hear anything. So quiet. Today 